virtual copies in Lightroom Classic. You might use them from time to time, but today I'm gonna show you some tricks for using virtual copies inside Lightroom Classic that'll allow you to really get the final image done the way you want. Virtual copies, coming up. Hi, I'm Terry Vanderheiden, professional photographer, and today I'm gonna to show you the value of using virtual copies in Lightroom Classic. Now I'll show you some common ways that virtual copies are used, and if you stick around, I'll show you how virtual copy can become a major part of your workflow when working with masks. All right, let's get into it. All right, we're inside Lightroom Classic. I got a couple of images up here. And now we're gonna make a virtual copy. So the way to do this is you highlight the image that you wanna work on, go up to photo, pull down and create virtual copy. And you can see what Lightroom did. It made a little virtual copy and you can tell it's a virtual copy because there's a little triangle down here, folded up corner. And what that does is reminds us that's a virtual copy. So we can do anything we want to the virtual copy. We can process it any way we want. We can print it. We can do anything we want with it. It acts just like uh, an additional image. However, it's not an additional image. Think of it as like a list of instructions that Lightroom Classic is saying, oh, these are the instructions that I want you to do to this image. So that's how that works. It doesn't make a new image and start filling up your hard drive with a bunch of virtual copies. Very, very small set of information that it adds to each image. So if we want to do another way, we can highlight this and we can right click in the middle of the image, pull down and get to virtual copy that way. So that's another way to make a virtual copy. Finally, there is a shortcut for a virtual copy and it's real simple. You just use on a Mac, use command apostrophe and that'll make a new virtual copy. If you're on the PC, it's control apostrophe and that makes a virtual copy. Now what a lot of times people do with these is they're, they're, you can do whatever you want with them. You can delete them if they're in your way. You can move them around. They're, they're, they act just like a regular image, which is great. But a lot of times what people do is that they'll take an image and they'll do some processing and then they can compare it, you know, in instruction, when I'm instructing, a lot of times I'm gonna try to start with a virtual copy so that I can go back and show you what it started like, right? But in this case, uh, everybody else can use it just to kind of compare to what they were starting with so they can see the advancements and see their changes. So like in this case here, let's go ahead and take this. We'll go into the develop module. And what we'd like to do is, you know, obviously when you start, you're going to be in the basic panel. And if we were to wanted to uh, saturate just the greens in this image, if we pulled saturation over all the way, for instance, it does saturate the greens, but it also saturates the wood uh, up here in the yellow area. It's all pretty unrealistic saturation. So that's not what we're going for. So let's go ahead and reset that. And let's go down and we'll go down to color mixer. Let's click on that. And of course we have an option here. We set it, make sure it's on mixer. And then we come down to saturation, make sure it's on saturation. You've got lots of choices here, but let's leave it on sat saturation. And then we come down to our greens and let's slide that slider over. So we can saturate the greens. And we know a lot of times when we're saturating greens that we really need to probably saturate some yellow as well. So let's go ahead and bring out some of the yellow as well and saturate some of that. And now we can see, I'll do a before and after, before and after, and you can see that we've saturated the greens in this image. Another way to improve this is let's go ahead and make a mask. So let's go into a mask here and we will, oh, let's use a brush tool here and we're just gonna brush uh, all the wood here. So we make sure that our, our mask is on auto mask and we'll just cook it right along here. We're just trying to mask out the wood. And this is kind of a, an odd way of thinking, right? Uh, you know, working in a mask inside of Lightroom Classic is what we're looking at is we're, we're trying to mask the things that we're not gonna work on, right? So let's just, that'll probably be good for right now for this demonstration. So we've masked this. We went a little overboard up here. So let's go ahead and subtract some of that. Let's make a smaller brush and we'll subtract some of that mask. We overpainted there, that's good. 
All right, so good enough. We've we've made a mask of the wood. Now, what do we want to do? We want to affect the greens, right? We don't want to affect the the uh, the wood. So let's go up here, and we'll click under the three dots, and we're going to say invert the mask. So we invert it, and you can see we're going to deal with everything else but the the uh, the wood. And we can actually probably take it another step further and do a little bit of brushing to remove areas up here that if you remember from the first time that we did this, you know, it was a little too oversaturated up in this area. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's pretty quick. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our saturation and start pulling that over. And you see what we've done is we've saturated just the greens, not the wood, not the upper yellow areas, the water doesn't is neutral, so it's not going to be saturated as much. So that's how, how you can go about that. You know, it took a couple of minutes to, to go through and make that development. And let's say, for instance, on this image, we say, you know what? I'd like to see what this looks like in black and white. Now, if this was our original we were working on, we'd basically lose all that trouble, the masks that we did, all the work that we went to, if we started to convert and make some changes, we're going to lose that, right? So let's make a virtual copy. So let's go in here. We'll just right click, simple, create a virtual copy. Now what Lightroom does, check this out. Lightroom, here's our original. And then we made our virtual copy that had the saturation of the greens. And then this is the saturation. It's the same one. It's a duplicate of it. So this is what we're going to do to make some changes. So let's go on into develop and we'll go up to our basic panel and we'll hit black and white. Now we could start seeing how this looks in black and white. So we may be maybe, you know, upping the contrast a little bit. We might be uh, taking the highlights up a little bit, maybe bring up the shadows, trying to get a little more depth out of this. Maybe we even take it a little step further and go into our black and white sliders and say, okay, the, what color do we want the greens, right? We can move this, we can make it brighter or darker. Let's make them a little bit brighter. And so let's say we're building our black and white like that. We have not messed up our original one that we added all the saturation to. We just made a new one and we're working with it. So this is really kind of a low expense, right? Because it, it's not something that you're going to take up much space inside of, inside of Lightroom Classic to add new virtual copies and try different things. It'll save you time because you're not going back and redoing all the stuff. Had we done this in black and white, we'd have to kind of reset, start over, and then go ahead and make our color ones again. But this way we can just flip between the two and try to decide which one we like. Pretty simple. Now, if you're enjoying this kind of content, hit the like button. Also be sure to subscribe to this channel and ring the little bell icon to be reminded of my next video. I always read and respond to all the comments in the comment section. So feel free to leave a comment, suggestion, or a question, and I'll get back to you. If you like, you can email me directly. My address is terry at imagelight.com. And I'll answer your questions, add you to my mailing list so you can be alerted to my next video that way. Now, let's get back in. I'm going to check out something that I think you're going to really like, and that's virtual copies to really enhance your editing. So let's go in here and let's check this out. We got a picture of a squirrel on a post. In the background here was... This is in my backyard. So this background here is my neighbor's trailer. Little, little stark and white. I don't really like the way that looks. So let's try a couple of things. Let's first off, let's make a virtual copy. And we're gonna go ahead and work on this one. Let's actually, let's take this and we're gonna make two virtual copies. Again, shortcut, command apostrophe. And now we've got another virtual copy. You can see down here in the timeline, we have our original and we have the two virtual copies. So let's go ahead with this one here. And let's go ahead and make a mask. And we're gonna select the subject. And, and Lightroom does a pretty good job selecting the subject because you know, it's really starkly different than the background. Now it doesn't select, it does select the post, but that's all right for this discussion. So let's go ahead and reverse this because it's this background we wanna to try to change, right? So let's come over to these three little dots, click, and we're gonna say invert the mask. So we'll be working on everything back here. So let's take our exposure and slide that way down. There we go. So now we've got a darker background, not quite as distracting. 
Let's zoom up here real quick, like. Let you take a look at something that happens on here. Now, Lightroom does a really good job at at making masks, but it's not perfect. So one of the things that it does when making a mask, you see this down here? See this black area here? This is an area that was the fur that was masked, but yet it's pretty apparent that something hokey is going on here. So this is real, real dark. Where the top of the squirrel is actually pretty decently masked. You know, it falls out of focus, so that not a super easy way to go. But so what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try a different method here and let's see how this looks. So let's go in here and we'll go back to fit so we can see what we're doing. All right, so a decent mask where we darken the background, but we have that little dark fur down underneath. So let's go do this a different way here. And let's try to select sky. So remember we did subject, then we reversed it. So it was essentially the background. So let's go ahead and try sky and see what that does. Now, as we look at this, let's go ahead and darken that down. We'll come in here to, oh, look at that. Did a really great job down on the chin. But up here, look, it's all fogging out. That's not so good. So what's a way that we can utilize this and have a better way to work with these two images, right? Well, this is real simple and it does involve going into Photoshop, but stay with me. I think you're gonna find this is worth it. Now, what's the one thing with these two images that we can count on? Is they're exact. Both of these images are exactly like the other except some different processing on it. So that means that if we move them into Photoshop, they'll be exactly aligned. So let's do that. So let's go ahead and highlight both of them. And now we're going to go in and normally we would go in and edit in Photoshop, right? We would do uh, edit the images in Photoshop, but we want to take it one step further. We're going to come down here and go open in layers in Photoshop. So now when we go into Lightroom, I mean, we go into Photoshop, it's gonna have those images stacked as two layers. Now with two layers, one on top of one another, we know that they're exactly aligned, right? Because they're the same image, they're just processed differently. So as we look at this, we can take a look and see, let's go ahead and zoom up here. We can see pretty quickly which one we have on top. So on top, we have the one with the dark fur. And then when we come under here, we can see that's the one where the fur down below actually looks pretty good, but it's not so good up here. So we've got these two images. Now, I think I've showed you this before, but this is one of the powers of Photoshop that to me is so awesome. And that is using a layer mask. So these two identically are on top of one another. All we do is we click a layer mask and now we're gonna go in here and we're gonna paint away that little chin area. So let's go ahead and zoom up. A little bit more. There we go. Grab our paintbrush, letter B, make sure we're at 100%, and let's move our brush down a little bit smaller. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to paint away that little black fur. So what we're doing is we're basically creating a hole in this mask to see through to the version where that chin area was done properly. So we're able to just cruise right on down here and you don't have to be that precise because it's a mask and a Lightroom or Photoshop rather knows it's a mask and it's just going to reveal what's underneath. It's creating a hole inside of this image here so we can see this through here. Now as we zoom out we have done exactly what we wanted. We got the best version of up here and we got the best version down here on this mask. So using Lightroom to make a mask, make two masks, two different masks, so that then you can put them together in Photoshop, use a simple masking that we use here, a layer mask, so we can cut that hole in that image and reveal what's underneath. So it's a simple way that you can create exactly what you want and deal with those expo different exposure things because the images are identical you're just processing differently. I hope this gives you a better understanding of virtual copies and, and really see the value of virtual copies because inside a Lightroom Classic, you can make as many as you want, doesn't build up 
any of your library. It, it's very, very small in terms of how much memory it takes up. But it's, it's a way that you can try different things and experiment with different processes and look and see what do you like best. And then especially if you want to turn something into black and white, you don't have to get rid of all your color changes. You can go directly into black and white and keep all your original changes that you made. And then thirdly, the way that you're going to use them is you're going to go in and take two, make global changes on both, and then bring them into Photoshop, bring them as a stacked inside as layers in Photoshop, then use the layer mask, and then you can use the more refined brushes inside of Photoshop to pull out the areas that you want. It's a real simple process that you can use virtual copies because you know they're exactly aligned because they really are the same image. All right, see you next time.